describe it. So it's in a field. Say it's in a field <coughs> northwest of the roadway, okay, or something like that, and it's marked with four orange cones. Okay. The more information you can give us, the better, so we know where to look and pick it out, okay? Because um, when you're looking from the air at a really large area, it's real hard to say, it's in an open field near the scene. Well, there might be three or four open fields and we need to know kind of which way to look, okay? So more information you give us, the better. Traffic cones, you guys carry the, like the 18 or 20 inch traffic cones, right? Okay, those work great. Um, if you're on a roadway, literally just park a vehicle on each side and say lay between these two vehicles. Okay, doesn't need to be anything fancy. Um, that's about it there. We'll talk in a little bit about LZ coordinator. Um, what do you guys have for nighttime LZ kits? Do you have that similar kit that's on the bottom right there? Okay. They're wearing out. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, don't get another one. They work great, but there's better things now. So if you're going to get anything different for landing zones or do anything, do you, are your traffic ones the solid ones or are they collapsible ones? Solid. Solid ones? Okay. I'm going to recommend what you do is you just pick four of them or however you want to do it, throw Velcro inside of it. Get a cheap three dollar, five dollar LED push light that you can at night set those cones up. Put a light inside, a white light inside those cones, and light them up. We'll see them literally from miles away. Okay. They work much better than these kits or the kit up there at the top left. So the the LZ kit like you guys have that we gave away many years ago, they right now run for about four to four hundred fifty dollars. It's outrageous. You can get those cones up at the top, they're collapsible cones, and they have LED lights built into them, a set like that for 150 bucks. So if you want something different that's gonna work better, that's what I recommend, okay? Um, but you don't have to spend that much. You already have cones, literally just get some lights and stick them in, inside of them, or you can even just set the cone on top of the light if it's got a weighted base on the ground, and set the light on the ground and turn it on. It illuminates great for us, and we can see it from a long distance away. Make your life simple with one. General safety notes, clearly marked LZ, don't point lights towards a helicopter, turn off any non-essential lights near the scene. Um, so we wear night vision goggles when we're flying at night. So we can see a lot of light very easily. Okay, so we don't need a lot of light at the scene. Um, so if there's a lot of lights near the LZ, it's kind of like to us, like coming into bright headlights, okay? It doesn't blind us, but it has a washout effect. It's hard to pick out the detail. So if we ask you to turn off any lights, it's probably going to be turn off excessive white lights near the LZ. So the LZ should really just be those marker lights on the corners, and that's it. Okay? No other lighting until we're on the ground. Then if you want to turn on a floodlight so we can see loading, unloading, things like that, we'd greatly appreciate it. But until the aircraft is on the ground, keep it as dark as possible. It actually makes it easier for us. Um, if you are, don't have lighting or cones or anything like that, all your turn off gear does reflect the materials, right? Put um, four people in the corners, or even one on each side if you don't have enough people to do for it, and say land between these people. That turn off gear with reflective material, we're going to see really well. We don't even need a light on them. We're going to see it really well at night with the goggles. Red lights are the brightest lights. So, so red, amber, orange lights, they really show up the best in our night vision goggles. So anything like that to mark the area is really helpful. Okay. Just a general landing zone diagram. So again, we're gonna approach into the wind. So assume the top of the screen is north. We're coming south to north, wind's coming from the north. Got the corner markers. On the right side of the screen there, they have some lights marking the power lines. Don't worry about doing that. Most importantly, tell us on our LZ brief on the radio where the power lines or obstructions are. Okay. If you have a vehicle or something to mark near, park near them and say, hey, they're directly above the rescue truck located on the east side of the LZ or something like that, that's fine. But again, most important thing is tell us. The light in the middle on the top, don't even worry about that because that's going to be the landing zone coordinator. That's going to be the person we're talking to. I'm going to talk about that in just a moment here. 
blowing dust, sand, dirt, snow. Only thing I'm going to say about that is let us know if that's a risk. So if we're landing somewhere and it's a field that's kind of dusty or dirty and potential for dust to blow up, just let us know. What we might have you do is wet it down a little bit, but more importantly, we just need to know it's there. So if we come in and that dust starts blowing, we have a plan made in advance. Okay? What's going to happen in that situation, same thing with snow. Let's say we're landing in a parking lot. Um, I don't know if any of you guys were there, but a couple of years ago we landed at um, uh, right, right by 49 and 21 intersection. It was probably with Sheriff um, right, right near that intersection, there's a, a big parking lot that we landed in. And we landed, and it's completely, it was fresh snow, like three inches of fluffy that blow easy snow. Well, we just hovered over, and it all blows away, and no problem. Well, to you guys on the ground, it looks like you can't see us anymore, and what's going to happen, they're going to crash. But remember, from our perspective, that's all blowing away from us, and we can probably see right all the way down to the ground the land without a problem. Okay? If we can't, we've already made a plan on how to get out of that if we can't see. So we don't come in without knowing exactly how we're going to get out of it. But that's why it's important that we know in advance that that's a potential. So LZ coordinator, this is the one that's talking to us on the radio is in charge of the LZ setup. Okay? So your job as LZ coordinator is really communication. Communication with the aircraft and communication with personnel on the ground to make sure things stay safe. Okay? Um, you're going to talk to us, give us a description of the LZ, tell us on approach as you have us in sight. So when we're coming and you might say, Theta Star got you in sight, you're headed right towards me, or Theta Star got you in sight, we're off to your right. You know, if you can't, if we're not headed right towards you, let us know that. Say, hey, go to your right or your left a little bit. Key thing before the aircraft comes in, identify any hazards. Okay, look at the area, make sure there's no potential hazards. Because um, again, paved area is pretty simple. You're pretty much looking for overhead hazards like wires, poles, lights, etc. If it's a field, especially if it's not a flat field cut, um, you need to look for any obstructions potential like big rocks or stumps or anything like that that could catch the skids of the aircraft. Okay? Look for any, any potential hazards. Okay? Uh, as far as farm fields, things like that, as long as any growth is lower than knee height, <coughs> it's probably not going to be a problem because our rotor wash will also blow it down so we can see if there's any obstructions as well. Okay? Um, much more than that, we really don't, don't like to use that. Overhead obstructions, you know, just look around the perimeter. Um, don't just walk out and say, yeah, it looks good. Actually stand where you want us to land and just do a circle, 360 degrees, and see if you see anything. If you see something, tell us about it. Even if it seems inconsequential. Probably the most common thing we don't get told about are cell phone towers. So, because you look and like, well, it's obvious there's a cell phone tower, you know, quarter mile to the south of the LZ, they're going to see that. Most likely we will, but depending on how we approach and how things are, and we do our circle around, it is always a potential that something could get missed. So the more information you can give us, the better. I'd rather have you tell me about something that's completely obvious and miss something that's important. Okay? The other thing is roadway signs. If there's roadway sign at or near the LZ, so we're landing at an intersection and there's a stop sign on the north and south side, for example, just let us know, hey, here's where the stop signs are. That way we, we're just cautious so we don't hit our tail rotor into that, something like that. So. More information is always better. At nighttime, you know, this, if you want to light up, power lines or anything like that, great. Don't feel like you have to. Um, most importantly, again, is tell us about where they are. But if you're going to light something up, don't try and light up the middle of the power line. Light it up at the pole, at the source, so we can see where the lines are running. Okay, That's going to be the most helpful. And then make sure that that light isn't shining at the aircraft at any point. Radio communications, generally we're going to use Mark II. Okay. Now, the state is working on potentially changing that, likely going to change that within the next year or so, and it's likely going to go to either black or gray fire, state fire ground. Okay? A um, couple of reasons for that I'm not going to get into. That's most likely what's going to happen. It'll probably be 
for example, maybe Blackfire as your primary, Greyfire as your secondary, and then Mark II as your third option. Okay? They're going to get rid of the EMSC. Problem is, this came out of the EMS communications plan years ago, but who does the talking to the helicopter most of the time? Fire, not EMS. So, um, we're kind of pushed to get something that's more useful for fire. LZ brief, I kind of talked about that already, but most importantly is give us a good description, location, type of surface, how it's marked. Um, don't worry about LZ coordinates for us, frankly. If you have them, you can give them to us, but we probably don't need them. Okay, all we need when that call comes to our dispatch center is an address or an intersection or whatever, and our CAD system figures the rest out. So if you say, you know, crashes at 2349 and A, we're going to pretty much figure it out real quick. Um, literally, they map it, they click one thing on their mouse, and it sends a page to the crew with the coordinates, the heading and distance for the aircraft, and the estimated flight time. So it's it's a great setup. So really don't need a whole lot um, as far as that goes. When you're talking to us, most important thing we want to hear from the people on the ground on our way in is the landing zone information. Um, if you want to give us a patient report from the EMS side, wait till the fire department has done the LZ stuff, and then contact us to say, hey, this is Berlin EMS, we have location update if you'd like. Keep it very minimal, I'm talking 15 to 20 seconds. We don't need vital signs, we don't need a whole lot. Really all we want to know is approximate age and weight of the patient, any airway concerns, and any immediate interventions needed. Okay? The rest of it we'll get from the underground. Um, we want to really minimize that radio traffic so if there's a safety issue, that that can be addressed first. Because okay? we don't get to you on the ground safe, the rest of it doesn't matter. So, um, if we need something more, we'll let you know if we need something more. But in, other than that, try and you know, narrow it down to 15 to 20 seconds, just real brief report. Um, if you're working near the aircraft, near the LZ, make sure you don't have any loose items that can be blown around, um, ball caps, things like that. Make sure everything's secured. Um, if you're, as the LZ coordinator, you want to be at that far um, upwind edge of the LZ. So the aircraft is coming at you, you're on the far back end of the LZ, so you can keep sight of the pilot as they come down into the center of the LZ. Okay? You don't need to do any fancy hand signals, you know, waving like this and things like this, okay? Don't worry about that at all. If you do anything at all, just two arms straight up, that no way we know you're the one we want to look at, okay? The other thing, only other hand signal I want you to know is the abort. So if we're coming in and something happens that you want us not to land, okay? Doesn't matter what the reason is. Number one, get on the radio and say abort landing and then just go like this in sight of the pilot, okay? That's not Gilligan's Island, come save me. That's stop, okay? Um, we'll go around, we'll make contact with you again, figure out what's going on, and then come back and land when it's safe. So, final approach, I kind of covered that. Um, don't shine any bright lights at the aircraft. Maintain contact, radio and eye contact. So I want you to look at this picture and I want you to tell me three things wrong with that picture. And I'll be fair, it's not our aircraft. I found this online. Any? It looks like the light is shining directly on the helicopter. Absolutely. So they're shining a bright light right at the aircraft. Yeah. I can guarantee you that pilot's probably not extremely happy. <laughs> it's probably hard to see. They're not watching the helicopter come down. So why aren't they? They're too the close. Debris that's flying they're too close. Okay. Okay, now, so they're too close to where the aircraft is landing. Those people obviously aren't the LZ security, right? Mm -hmm. Because if they were, they'd be in a better position. They'd be wearing proper protection. So they're too close to the LZ, okay? Or if those are the LZ security, those four people, that's a really small freaking LZ. <laughs> okay, um, so that's you know, ultimately. Um, and the other is they have loose things, caps, things like that, they can be blown. If they're that close, that that aircraft's that far in the air and they're already covering, there's high likelihood that something's going to get blown off of it. Okay. Scene safety, once we're on the ground, I'm not 
going to go real in depth. But the most important thing I want you guys to know, if that aircraft is going to stay running, we're going to let you know that, but we need the LZ coordinator to stay off the front side of the aircraft and a tail rotor guard on the opposite side. Okay? What we would prefer is that LZ coordinator not be front and center, like right in the middle of the aircraft, but go off to the aircraft right on the pilot side, so the pilot has good view of you, and then the other person, the tail rotor guard, on the back opposite side. Okay? Your job, once that aircraft is on the ground, is just to make sure nobody approaches that aircraft from anywhere. Okay? The only people that should come near the aircraft is the flight crew or people that are under the direct control of the flight crew if they're assisting us in some way. Okay? Other than that, nobody goes near it. Okay? Um, if the aircraft is shut down, still really nobody <coughs> needs to go near the aircraft unless they're under control of the flight crew. Or if we say the aircraft is shut down, then we might send somebody to go and get something from the, have the pilot get something for them if he's staying near the aircraft. that cover that loading unloading um, kind of talked about that a little earlier if we're on a paved area we're really not going to need much help at all in most cases it's easy for us to wheel that cot in and out um, and get the patient in um, if we do need help loading we'll tell you what we need we'll tell you exactly who we who we want in other words we might say hey I need one EMS person to help us with airway controls we're going or something like that or I need a couple of firefighters to help carry this or whatever. We'll tell you what we need, what we need you to do, and how we're going to do it. So. Mm, looks like they might be on the way. They didn't say, but they just took off, so I'm assuming they're on the way. We're almost done here. Aircraft departure. Once we're out of sight, maintain LZ security until we're, once we take off, excuse me, maintain LZ security until we're out of sight. Okay. Um, monitor the radio frequency. That way, if we need to come back and land for a reason, we know we have a safe spot to go. Once we're out of sight, we're not your problem anymore. If something's going to happen, it's going to happen in the first couple of moments after takeoff. Let's say we have a mechanical issue or something like that, or something happens with the patient and we need to just come back and do something. Hazmat, again, use your resources. Ultimately, you know, really just communicate. If it's a hazmat situation, further put the LZ further away, but it's really important that we know whether there's a hazmat situation going on and where it is so we don't overfly. So let's say you have a chlorine gas leak somewhere. Last thing you want, even though you have the LZ two miles away from it or whatever, you want to make sure that we know where it is so a helicopter doesn't fly over the incident, in, you know, inadvertently. So just good communication on that. Okay. post crash survival, we're going to do that actually at the aircraft later on. We're going to talk about the emergency stuff with the aircraft. So, let me call them real quick and make sure. Oh, on the way, 15 minutes. You just texted me. So, let's go outside and get set up. So, who is my LZ setup team?